Hello, welcome back again. It's Thursday, which means there's only a week to go. This time next week, we will nearly be at the close of polls. I've had a lovely day. I went down to Millam School this morning and spent an hour with Year 11. And what a privilege that was. What a fine, fine bunch of students getting ready to take off into the real world, some of them. And uh, some of them hopefully will stay and study and uh, go on to do amazing things. But I wish I'd had the chance to chat to a politician at that age because there's so much I can tell them about how you can get involved, how positive politics can be, how it make, you can sort out the things in the world that are just crazy. And it was just a joy to be able to take their questions and let them ask anything that they wanted to ask. Okay. Hello, good evening. So it's Millam School this morning. Hello, Christine. Hope you're feeling better. Um, and what else have we done today? Still planning for this big, big weekend activity that I'll tell you more about later. That was a big chunk of my day. And then this evening, we had an hour long, uh, we were recording an hour long radio debate. Thank you for sharing the video. Please keep sharing it on different Lib Dem pages and West Cumbrian pages. Um, that's going to be aired next Wednesday at six o'clock on Radio Cumbria. There was a lot of political point scoring going on, which annoys me because I just want to talk about the issues. But also some interesting comments. The independent Michael Guest was talking about how um, we should let our consultants lead new types of training. And I absolutely agree on that. But he was saying it would need to be subsidised and I don't think it would be. These are the kind of things that we can do if we stop getting ignorant interventions that don't work and get a chance to focus on what we do well. But I guess the thing that really annoyed me at the hustings is I'm, I'm getting more and more frustrated with the Tory candidate because she could do so much with the position she's in and she's doing nothing apart from getting vacuous promises that don't even really make sense because... They don't understand what's already gone on or what's actually needed. Ah! What a waste! You know, this Tory government could pull Bright Tribe out of Whitehaven Academy tomorrow if Theresa May decided to do it. They could stop the success regime and reinstate the consultation that we should have had, the one from the Kirkup Review. They do have the power to do that. But unless somebody tells them precisely what they need to do and why they need to do it and give them the justification, it won't happen. And the Tory candidate is missing the opportunity to do that very clearly because she doesn't understand the issues. Grr. Okay, what's going on here then? Um, so this weekend, we're going to be in Whitehaven Marketplace handing out these flyers advertising events now that's back to front as ever because of what Facebook does so I've just printed off the other way around but the print quality is not very good but hopefully you can see Saturday this Saturday we're going to be at Whitehaven Market we've got a market stall with loads and loads of leaflets where people will be coming to grab these flyers to hand out around Whitehaven to tell people where we're going to be so early afternoon we'll be in the United Reform Church in the in the hall around the back there, two till three, and you can come and ask me anything. 3.30 till 4.30 in Dissington. Dissington, confusing place because it feeds into Workington rather than Whitehaven. The kids go to school in Workington. It's much more affiliated with there. Got all its own issues. Looking forward to meet people in Dissington. Please come. Five till six in Parton. And then 6.30 till 7.30 in Myris, in the community centre there. Please come and ask me anything. I care so much, but I also care that people here feel like they can talk to their politicians, the people who represent them, and tell them whatever's on their mind and help to work out how to sort out the issues in their area. Sunday. Here we go, 10 till 11 in Eaglesfield Village Hall. 
Then we're hoofing it down the road. Cleetamoor Civic Hall have got a car boot sale on, but we've got the Octagon Hall. So, Cleetamoor, come and have a car boot sale and see us there at the same time. Quick run from Eaglesfield to Cleetamoor, but that should be doable. 12.45 till 1.45, Seascale Methodist Hall. Come and chat to me there. And then we're doing a Facebook Live at 2.15 with Chris Davies, who was MEP of the year in 2014. Hugely respected for his work to reform the fisheries policy. And he's going to be talking about why the single market matters and hard Brexit is a really stupid idea. Ask him whatever you want to ask him. Challenge him if you think that hard Brexit is a good idea. Let's have that conversation, please. So that's one for everyone all around the country. Please come and join us there. 3.15, we are down in Ravenglass in the Moncaster Parish Hall. And then 5 o'clock, I'll be in Millham in the Guide Hall. Please come and chat to me there. And then we have hustings, our final hustings in the Beggars Theatre in Millham. Your last chance to grill the custard. Grill, grill the custard? Am I going Doctor Who? confused with fish fingers your ch last chance to grill the candidates please come and see us all in Millham so I really 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 need people to come to Whitehaven Market on Saturday morning and take a bunch of these and hand them out in their street or we'll have lists of groups of streets to do because I want people to have the chance to come you may not like the Lib Dems, you may not like me, but if you want to help with democracy and just let people in your street know that they can go and grill, talk to a candidate, then I would really, really value your help. Saturday morning, we'll be there by nine, set up by nine. Come and grab a bundle of leaflets, please. The Dems are a volunteer-led party. We are not funded by the unions. We're not funded by big donors with particular interests. We're funded by members and we're staffed by volunteers, which is people like you. If you want Liberal Democrats in your area, you have to make it happen. We don't have the resources, have tiny, tiny resources compared with the other parties. Thank you so much to everyone who's donated. Every penny matters. If you want to donate, it's rebeccahanson.org.uk. Click on donate. Thank you. Um, OK, what have we got here? Sophie Murphy says, ministerial responses in Parliament about Whitehaven Academy useful to you or they, they're likely to be out of date if made in January? I suspect I've already seen them. I've probably watched the debate. They didn't say very much, if I remember rightly. Please keep your comments coming. All comments and questions welcome. OK, so can we win this? So my manager is Andy Sanger. He came straight up from helping to organise the Rotherham by-election. Big borough by-election in Rotherham where John Pre Prescott grew up. So, let's see. Twent uh, this was the result in the by-election last year. Okay. So it was a three... There were three seats and they went to Labour, Labour and UKIP with all the Labour candidates getting well over a 1,000 votes. OK. Liberal Democrat down in fifth place. So a few weeks ago, in 2017, there was a by-election. Just look at how things were with the Liberal Democrat candidate coming fifth. This is what happened in 2017. Adam Carter, Liberal Democrat candidate. This was him here. Last year he got those votes. Is that 600 and... Gosh, 37 votes down in fifth place. And this year he got 2,000 votes. And 66% of the vote. Labour, who previously never got less than a thousand votes, got. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> it's 
back to front for me. It's really hard to read. Is that 519 votes? 17% of the vote. They'd gone down from huge share of the vote, winning by miles, to 17% of the vote. That's what's going on here. Vapor votes completely collapsed. The, our, all our phone polling is coming back awful. We've got some yesterday, phone polling yesterday, Labour 9% of the vote. That's why I'm fighting this so hard. I hate Tory policy, hate what they're doing to our schools, hate what they're doing to our NHS. It's terrible. The last thing we need to do is endorse this government. So please vote for me. Know what I'm doing. I could make you proud. I could do a really good job. But these, this doesn't come easy. It takes you to vote for me. It takes you to go out and persuade your friends to vote for me. If you're a Lib Dem around the country, please get phone banking. If you're local, I need you to come to Whitehaven Market on Saturday morning and help me get out these flyers so people know they can come and meet me and ask me anything. And then they can make up their minds. The problem we've got is if I don't get the chance to have that contact with people. It's so hard when we're coming from a low base, but it can be done. I just need your help. Okay, Ben Whiteside, it says Millam School. Why have you said Millam School? I was in Millam School this morning. Are you a student at Millam School? If so, I was really impressed. Parents should be proud. Teachers should be really, really proud of their students. I just love Millam. I've been so impressed by all the people I've met. Love your councillors. Love your mayor and his wife. Love your incoming mayor and her family. It's uh, just loads of great people. All the volunteers that I've met, all your campaigners. You should be so proud of your community. You just need some help from the outside. Vote Trudy. No, don't vote Trudy. That's a really bad idea. She's a really weak candidate. Tories are bad enough. If we were going to have a Tory candidate, let's at least have one who's sharp enough to get something out of them. Andrew, stay strong. You're doing a great job. Keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you so much. The change in voting shows you can never take anything for granted. No. Everything is changing. You know, people seem... <laughs> There's this assumption that everyone wanted hard Brexit. Now, what is that based on? What proportion of people wanted hard Brexit? <laughs> Thank you, Paula. <laughs> Out asking, listening to people in the street, what, 10% maybe wanted hard Brexit? Thank you for your donations. And <sighs> people voted for Brexit. They told me, oh, if we vote for Brexit, we won't actually leave the EU. It'll just give the, the government a stronger hand for negotiating. And we definitely won't be leaving the single market because we want to stay in the single market. But everyone tells us we don't have to leave the single market if we, if we go for Brexit. Very few people wanted a hard Brexit. Yeah, you've got the anarchic libertarians who believe if you just get rid of all systems of organisation, things will get better. They're wrong. The world doesn't work like that. People voted for Brexit because David Cameron told them they shouldn't. And nobody here trusted him because he stuffed up everything. Stuffed up the schools, stuffed up the NHS. Why the heck would they trust him? And this was their chance to stick two fingers up at him and say, I do not trust you. And they did. Whew. Hello, what have we got here? John Thompson says there was no. Hang on. Have you finished that one? There was no manifesto for the referendum. Exactly. It should have been set up like the Scottish independence referendum, where... There was a dossier on what was being proposed. Available 18 months in advance, really long dossier there for analysis. So you chose between status quo or an alternative. It shouldn't have just been a chance for people to say, David Cameron, I do not trust you. Thank you for that, John. Joanne. Oh, and May has done a deal with General Motors. Okay, I'm struggling to keep up with the press. I'll have to read up on that one later. Apparently. Okay. 
The Conservatives pledged to stay in the single market in their 2015 manifesto, page 72. Yeah, Tory promises. Trudy's been extracting lots of Tory promises. Don't get promises, get actions. Joanna says, my daughter has epilepsy and leaving the European Medicines Agency is a disaster. Please could you send me some more information about that? The more information I get, the more we can do. So there's been a complete cascade of articles about the problems of leaving Euratom today. People are hugely concerned it'll stuff up our nuclear industry, stuff up new builds, stuff up trade agreements on fuel, complete blooming chaos. So I've been able to work with Lord Teverson in the House of Lords and we have got an amendment in due for debate in the House of Lords to extract your atom from the Brexit bill. And all the information that people are sending me, and thank you for that, I am sending straight through to him so we can argue the case as strongly as possible. The Tories, I mean, there is no need to leave your atom. None at all. You don't have to do it to deliver hard Brexit. The hard Brexit no one wants and wasn't in your manifesto is contradicts your manifesto. Just let it go. Let us have a tiny bit of sanity, please. Thank you, Jane. Joanna says, basically, we won't get drugs approved. Well, that wouldn't surprise me at all that they just won't have thought of that or won't care in their obsession with delivering hard Brexit. Thank you very much, Leslie. Really appreciate it. So a new wonder drug could be years away for us, yet the EU would get it quickly. Are you, Andrew, okay, thanks, Joanna. If you've got any articles, links you can send me, please do. Andrew says, are you nervous for the by-election next week? Andrew, I've not had any nerves at any stage. I've been up on platforms, being broadcast live, um, doing loads of live news. I don't know why. I just haven't got any nerves. I have a fear that we're going to end up with a Tory MP. And... Uh, that makes me feel tremendously sad for the consequences for this country, for the endorsement in the Tory government and for the poor quality of the way this will this Copeland will be run. But at least I will have known that I did everything I could. I'm just focused on every minute of every day working hard to touch people and communicate with people and let them know that they have to vote for me, not for their traditional parties. A vote for your traditional party, if it's not the Lib Dems, is a vote for the Tories because it's a wasted vote that you could spend getting me in because nobody else is going to, to beat the Tories. I'm the only one who can beat them. Labour vote has collapsed. It's not the fault of the local party, it's the fault of what's going on at the centre. Will there be more TV? I assume so it's just coming so thick and fast now uh, i don't know yet but <laughs> it just comes at me john thompson says mrs may did well for you though they're circulating some pictures of her in this in the school that she was in yesterday and um hello josh why should you vote for Tur trudy can you give us a reason please that's what anyone is struggling with. Tories sold us down the river with our schools, down the river with our NHS. Terrible government writing policy on the back of an envelope. And the Liberal Democrats, we work really hard to create policy. You consult it. You look, take in everyone's experience, everyone's opinion. You look at what's going on. You look at what the consequences of change would be. And eventually you draft policy. You consult it. You take it through debate. And eventually you get policy. Tomorrow night, um, Nigel Jones will be here. Nigel chairs the Education um, Association Committee. That I'm just... Oh, hang on, I'll just switch that noise off. Sorry, it's going ping, ping, ping. Um, 
There we go. Um, Liberal Democrats Education Association develops education policy. I sat on the committee for three years working really hard to challenge Michael Gove's policy. And it's such a complex process. We'll talk a bit about it tomorrow night, about what's involved in actually developing good education policy and what's going on now and what we worked on together. So I'm delighted Nigel's coming to be my guest tomorrow night, round about eight o'clock, I think, on Friday night. If you'd like to join us, you'd be very welcome. Yeah, you're not coming up with any reasons to vote for Trudy, are you? Oh, yeah, let's have loads more policy written by press hacks on the back of an envelope that sounds like it'll win votes. That's such a good way to develop our national policy. Yeah, let's say, make it clear we will stay in the single market in our manifesto and then decide we're going to drive for hard Brexit so hard that we're even pulling out of Euratom. Let's vote Tory for a weak MP who doesn't even know how to get anything out of their government when they're falling over themselves to give it to her. Hang on, phone ringing. I'll just uh, let that one ring for a bit. OK, more questions coming in. How are we doing? It's time for a change. Labour have run this country, run this county, or ran Copeland, for too long. 82 years too long. Exactly. All the problems with Copeland's infrastructure. Terrible. Don't vote Trudy. Apologies for shouting. Shout away! <laughs> GM bus, GMB Hustings, did you talk about how they went? Uh, I think I did. They went quite well. Um, one of my big annoy annoyances I talked about last night, but I've actually got the papers here. I could talk about in my bag, just have a dig. I am sick of the Labour propaganda. I had a real go at the GAMB because they fund the Labour Party and the people at that hustings pour their money down the drain on this. Okay, this is the front page of the Whitehaven News today. It says a vote for Labour, only a vote for Labour will save our hospitals, okay? I've been the main health campaigner for a long time. Jamie Reid resigned because he didn't know how to save the hospitals. I do. And that is such a lie that the GMB are, post, are paying a fortune to put on here. Okay. Labour have not got a clue how to do this in opposition. All their talk is about what they would do if they were in power. That's not going to happen off the back of this by-election. So you have to use oppositional work, which is detailed, evidence-based work, and they don't know how to do it. So that's a big, fat lie that all the G people who fund the Labour Party have paid for. If you vote for Labour instead of voting for me, that's a vote for the Tories, because it's a wasted vote. And let's look back, while we're on the case with the GMB-funded lies, at this. OK. This was a headline from a while ago on some work that I did to challenge the, um, the Cumbria CCG governing body who will make the decision on the successor regime. This was a quote from me challenging them. So if you look beside it here, there's a picture of me and a description of what I was doing. Sorry, it's all back to front. But it says, babies will die, how can you live with that? That was my work. And that is dated December the 8th, way before this by-election was called. Labour then pay a fortune to do a wraparound. And this article re talks about how local Labour MPs Sue Heyman and Ju John Woodcock join local healthcare professionals to object to plans to strip West Cumberland Hospital of its maternity wing. And what they've done, because they didn't actually have any headlines of their own, to illustrate this, they clipped my headline and cut off the picture of me and references to the, and said it was from John Wood, that Labour, um, Labour, key Labour figures and healthcare professionals. Another lie. They don't know what they're doing and they are paying a fortune to spread those lies. I'm the one who can fix this. 
They don't know what they're doing. A vote for Labour is a vote wasted if you want to challenge the Tories. Sorry, I'm shouting at you guys and you don't deserve it at all. Calm down, Rebecca. <sighs> so that was because during GMB Hustings, someone sent me through a snap of the Whitehaven News um, front page. So I got a bit annoyed about that. Josh, are you old enough to vote yet? Who's Josh? Oh, right. <laughs> um, da -da, sorry. Um, Rebecca appears to be getting Trudy supporters, trolls turning in. Good. Let them hear a bit of reality. Rosie. No face. What a shame. Can you think of any reason to vote for Trudy? Any rationale as to why that would be a good idea, Rosie? Is she your mum? Do you want her to be an MP? In which case, fair enough, I accept your comment. Because I think if I was a kid, I'd want my mum to be an MP as well. Cause <laughs> maybe she annoys you and me. Maybe you want her to go off to Westminster for the week. Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Can you come up with a reason why she's class? Right. Try looking for someone who understands politics and how to get things done in Westminster. I think it might be, I think they might be her daughters, Joanna. <laughs> it's her daughter. Okay. Were you in my assembly today? Is any of these daughters in year 11? I talked to all the year 11s at Millham School and I think I think some of Trudy's daughters are at, at Millham School. Doubt she's been in. <laughs> you were the one, only one I saw at the success regime meetings. Thank you, John. That's because I was the only one who was at the success regime meetings. Hiya, Roger. Lovely to hear you coming over loud and clear, Rebecca. Sorry you can't vote for me in Mary Poor, but you can come down on Saturday morning and hand out a few leaflets for me, Roger, and bring your friends. You were the only candidate with any passion yesterday. Thank you. I think some of the other candidates do have passion. Just, uh, I think I've got more. It just comes every bit inside of me I hate the fact that kids are suffering at Whitehaven Academy I hate what's going on with the success regime I just it just riles me deep down inside and I want to fix it that's why I was there that's why I was there fighting and I, obviously the others don't have that passion because they weren't there Lynn Craig Rebecca how can you change the mindset of these people who say Rebecca's great but I always vote Labour so frustrating um, well, a lot have changed already, and sometimes they actually have to say that, and then they look at themselves and go, but maybe not. And then in the privacy of the ballot box, it's up to them. Who knows what they'll do when they actually have to put that cross on the page. I have so much empathy for people who feel that way. I understand their commitment and a lot of people have invested loads of time and energy in the Labour Party over a long time. If you vote for me, your future will not collapse because this constituency is being split and you will have a good MP to work with. If you want to plan for the future and you live in Whitehaven, work with Sue Heyman. She's a good MP and she will help you build the Labour Party for the future. If you live in the south of Copeland, work with John Woodcock because that's going to be your MP. You have a future to build, but just from now, right now, we need to stop this Tory government getting a massive mandate for hard Brexit and for all the bad things they are doing with our schools and with the NHS. So just now, please, 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 find it in yourself somewhere to put that cross in the box for me. And if you don't, I will understand, but please, please do your best. What are your top things you want to do? I want to fix the situation at Whitehaven Academy. I want to get rid of the sponsors so we can start to build a good future for those kids. I want to stop the success regime, but I'm working on that anyway. I had a long meeting with the CQC yesterday. Um, 
I can't guarantee it, but we've come such a long way over so many months. I want to be a good custodian of the nuclear industry. There are so many emerging issues that really, really are critically important that need to be well managed. How can I stop at just three? Having worked with the flood people in the flood group in Keswick, I want to be there to represent them because they are doing such good work that make a real difference to flooding down the Derwent Valley. It's just there's so much more than that. I want people to feel connected to politics and democracy. I don't want them to feel that everyone is out to stuff them and they cannot change things. I want to show people how they can get involved in politics and change the things that matter to them. Just by always treating people with respect and listening and working out solutions. Roy seems passionate, though I'm not sure passionate. <laughs> Roy the Independent. Yeah, he's de he definitely gets passionate at times. He's certainly kept passionate about food processing. Ethan, hello Ethan. Vote Trudy. Why should we vote for Trudy? <laughs> Why? Don't vote Trudy. It's a really bad idea. It's an endorsement for the Tory government. You know, if we had a re we have got we've got some really inspirational, fantastic Tories in West Cumbria. You got one as mayor in Millham down there. He's a good one, and you've got yeah, just some really thoroughly decent Tories who could who know the world and could challenge the government and tell them how it is. Some people with experience of politics who know what they're doing and could have got something out of this situation where the government will, uh, the Tory party would love to win this election and would do an awful lot to win it. But instead we've got Trudy. Ah, sorry if you're Trudy's daughter. I, I, I'm really sorry. I bet she, you know, she, I'm sure she's an inspirational mum. I know that she's very keen to do this. <clears throat> Okay, is that us done? Then I think it's time for stop. If you don't want me to stop, send me another question very quickly. Tomorrow night, as I said, around by 8 o'clock, I will be back with Nigel Jones, who's chair of the Liberal Democrats Education, Policy, uh, Education Association Committee that I was on for three years during the coalition government, talking about that. Yeah, it's time to say good night. Good night, everybody. Enjoy your Thursday evening. Sleep well. Maybe see you tomorrow if you can afford some of your Friday evening round about 8 o'clock. Bye for now.